So in this lesson, we're going to start talking about working with some basic building blocks in AngularJS, some things that you're going to use over and over that are pretty fundamental to AngularJS in general. So the first one is interpolation. And interpolation is relatively simple. To interpolate in a view, you're going to use the double curly braces. The double curly braces will evaluate whatever is passed inside it. So we can pass a string. You see it there. You can evaluate an expression. So you can go like 12 plus 13, 25, things like this. So this is a pretty basic overview of how interpolation works. We'll get into more of it later, but that's the general way it works. And you'll be using this a lot. It's pretty easy to get familiar with. So the next building block that we're going to talk about is controllers. And controllers have quite a bit more to them, at least that we need to worry about now. So AngularJS controllers are used to operate some section of the view most of the time. This will be done using the ng-controller directive. I'll show you this here. So let's make a div. To attach a controller to this div, we'll use ng-controller. And then we will pass it the stringified name of the controller we want to use, so main controller. Now main controller doesn't exist yet, but if it did, it would be linked here. Now let's actually declare the controller which we want to use. There are three main ways to declare controllers in AngularJS, and some are better than others. So the easiest way is to declare a global function. So you can go var main controller equals function, and then we're going to inject scope like we talked about previously, and then we're going to use scope, declare val on it, and we'll say val is test, one, two, three. So what have we done here? Main controller is a global JavaScript function. It's being passed dollar $scope which recall is using dependency injection, so it's not being passed parametrically. But we can use it as a parameter. When we're attaching a val attribute, that's a primitive string. Now we can actually use $scope in the view. Recall that $scope is available in the view, but we're not going to explicitly invoke it. It's just implied. So we can just go val, and then we should be able to use the val attribute. So let's see if this works. Awesome. Test one, two, three. That means this is working. So, what have we done here? We've correctly linked the controllers. We've correctly injected dollar scope. We've added a val attribute of test one, two, three, and we're correctly interpolating into the view. Awesome. So, this means this is totally working. Additionally, you don't have to add a primitive. You can add an object or you can add a function. So, let's go scope.func equals function. And then you can do return abc plus df and interpolate that so recall that this is going to evaluate whatever is inside it so by using the parenthesis here this is going to evaluate the func function which we've assigned to scope and if we see this abc def okay so this is working scope is like any other plain old javascript object and you can use it in the exact same way in the view the problem is, though, that this is not a great way to declare a controller. Let's get rid of this extra stuff. Let's go back to val. What we're doing here is we're polluting the global namespace in JavaScript. If we were to continue to declare controllers in this exact same way, we would just have a bunch of functions just laying around, and this is not a clean way to code. We want to make this as compact and modular as possible. So let's get rid of this. The second way of declaring a controller is to declare a controller on the entire application. So what does that mean? This module is the entire application. So we want to reuse this to declare a controller on it. So we're going to go var app equals the module. And then we can reuse app and declare a controller on the entire application. So the controller method. The first argument is the name of the controller. So main controller again. And the second argument is the function of how we want the controller to operate. So function, we're gonna inject scope again, and then the function will use val, and then we'll go test four, five, six, so we can see the difference if it worked. This should work in the exact same way. So let's see if it works. Awesome, test four, five, six. 
This is cleaner than declaring a global function, but this still isn't optimal because you've probably realized that the controllers are still being dumped into a bag, essentially, in the entire application, and there's no compartmentalization of the controllers. And so this is still not exactly what we want. So let's go one level further. So the third way to declare a controller, which is the preferred way, is to declare a controller in a module and then include it within the application. Okay, so let's do that. So how do we declare a module? Well, we already did it here. So we've got angular.module, and we'll declare it in the exact same way. And then the name of the module, so we'll just call it controllers. It doesn't matter what it is. There are no dependencies. On this module, we're going to declare a controller. So it's the same syntax as before, in controller, and then the function, inject scope, and then dollar scope.val equals test789. So we've declared a module, declared a controller on that module, injected scope, and then set a val on the scope. So let's see if this works. So it didn't work. Why didn't it work? That's because we didn't add a dependency to the application. So although we've declared a module on Angular, the app itself doesn't know it needs this module. So we need to say, hey, you need this module because it's got some stuff that you want. So controllers is added as a dependency. So this lists this as a dependency. And now this should work. Boom, test 789. Okay, so great, this works. This is what you're gonna ultimately see in production applications because these will be broken out into their own files and it'll all be very modular. For our purposes right now, we're working within a single file. This is a little too verbose for what we really need. So let's comment this out and go back to this. We don't need this dependency anymore. So let's return to this controller. This is the structure which we're going to use for a while. However, declaring a module and adding it as a dependency is what you're generally going to see in production applications. It's the cleanest way to do it. It allows you to really make your application incredibly modular, and it's the way Angular is supposed to work. We'll use this for now, but this is the preferred way of doing it in a production application.